Last year in Honolulu, APEC leaders committed to spark green growth by developing a list of environmental products on which we would significantly reduce tariffs. And here in Vladivostok, uh, the leaders delivered on that commitment, agreeing on a list that includes solar panels, gas, and wind turbines, and dozens more products. Today, tariffs on these products can run as high as 35 percent. By 2015, APEC members will cut them to 5 percent or less. By making green products more affordable and creating jobs wherever they are manufactured, including in the United States, we hope this decision will inspire other trading groups to emulate APEC's record of trade innovation. Second, as leaders meet here in Russia, our negotiating partners are engaged in intense diplomacy to advance the Trans-Pacific Partnership, known as the TPP. This free trade agreement is central to America's economic vision in Asia. By reducing market distortions and leveling the playing field, the TPP will raise the bar for competition in a way that benefits every economy in the region, whether it is an active partner in the TPP or not. Third, APEC members took important steps to promote food security. Record-breaking droughts are driving up the price of corn, wheat, and other grains uh, with the fear that people will be left without enough to eat. Uh, the APEC leaders recognized we won't solve this problem by banning or restricting food exports. We need to ensure uh, greater agricultural productivity and that food supplies reach the people who need them most no matter where they live. Fourth, we continued our progress on an area that bears directly on this region's economic competitiveness. As a growing body of evidence proves, investing in women is great for the bottom line. The APEC region is losing as much as $47 billion every year because of barriers that keep women from fully participating in the economic and political lives of their countries.